Welcome to a on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of working with the list box and check box macros. So as we now learn, we can add lots of interactivity to passage by working with the link macro or its sister macros, link prepend, link replace, and link append. We can also, as we now know, work with the box macros, that is list box, check box, and number box. In this particular example, I'm going to hone in a little bit more on list box and check box as things that work with sets of data and then allow readers to make choices about them. In each case, this example hopefully gives a better idea of why you might choose one macro over another. A pretty common thing you will find in a number of different interactive stories dealing with fantasy settings is the idea of someone picking equipment. You also find this in role-playing games of a very similar nature, choosing some equipment over other equipment and for different reasons why. So part of the thing we want to think about as we th think about these two macros, the list box and check box, is why we might want to use them and then what they say about the data and usages of them. In the case of list box, as we saw in a previous video when it introduced this topic, list box macro allows us to have multiple options working with the option macro, and then a reader chooses among them. The check box macro, on the other hand, allows the reader to choose between two things. It's either checked or it's not, one thing or the other. So a list box, lots of things but one choice. Checks box, one choice among two different things. So let's look at an example of picking equipment. So if we're picking equipment, we need to consider why we're doing different actions or why we might ask a reader as an author to do different things. When it comes to the list box macro, we might have them choose among different options to equip for their character or if their avatar or other settings like that. However, we might also have the ability to turn things on or off. That is, they might be wearing pants or not be wearing pants. So let's look at this example. I have the list box macro and then a number of different options. Remember, a reader has to choose one among a collection of these. So for every option they have, they have to only choose one of this entire set of them. So for picking equipment, let's say for the head that this character is either wearing a crown, a cap, a hat, or a helmet. They're not wearing multiple things at the same time. They could in a more silly example, but generally someone's either wearing a crown or a helmet and they're not wearing both. However, when it comes to the body, they might be they might be wearing a shirt or not wearing a shirt. They might be wearing a belt or not wearing a belt, and they might be wearing pants or not wearing pants. Notice that these two different macros are just kind of two different needs for how we think about interacting with data. So we have a whole bunch of things, and a reader is choosing between them. We might more we might want list box as a better option. If we are choosing between two things, either on or off, or true or false, or one or zero, or other situations like that, the checkbox macro might be the better choice. So in this case, we can choose again a crown, cap, hat, or helmet, and then we can have our shirt on, our belt on, or our pants on or off. And then let's move over to this second passage right here. Notice that I'm just setting up a kind of silly thing. If the shirt is zero, no shirt, no problem. We aren't wearing pants, right? So let's go ahead and just see what this looks like choosing among a list of different options, the list box macro, or in this case, pants or shirts or belts on or off, moving over to adventure, and then depending on what we pick, we see a result from that. So not necessarily an extended example moving into a larger adventure, but getting us to understand why we might choose one macro over another. Again, just as a review of the things I've already said in this video, for list box, we're creating a list of things and allowing a reader to choose between them. Check box, we're choosing one thing or another, true or false, one or zero, something like that. Now, potentially what I could have done, or a, another reader might do in a potentially extended example, is have a list box for every corresponding slot or section of the body they might want, where a reader could choose between a number of different things, crowns and hats, or various things to wear on the body, and then you could choose to turn them on or off, combining both list box and checkbox macros at the same time. However, something else I want to cue people into as we think about these macros is how they interact with variables. Now, the list box has a single variable because even though there are lots of different options, only one of them will be chosen and this the variable for list box will only be one value. However, checked box, on the other hand, has multiple different variables. Notice I have shirt as a variable, belt as a variable, pants as a variable. If 
potentially you might end up in a situation if you're using lots of checkboxes where you're going to need lots of different variables, or at least keep track of lots of different values. Listbox, on the other hand, is only ever going to match one variable to one instance of Listbox. So they do come with some understandings of how we work with data as well as how we work with variables and that data. For a checkbox, you're probably going to need at least a value or potentially a variable per use of checkbox, whereas Listbox, you're only ever going to need one and then potentially multiple different options. So something to think about as we design our stories is this a better use of list box, a better use of checkbox, or potentially, and not included in this video, potentially even number box for entering numbers of different kinds. Thanks for watching.